Got my first fluke. It's the Fluke 101 multimeter. My first fluke ever. I had a Craftsman for over 30 years. Um, it's not like I use a multimeter every day and this fluke I won't use every day. I'll probably use it uh, three or four times a year. But my Craftsman multimeter, it's been through three Navy moves before I retired in 2003 and then another three moves since I retired. Uh, I must have had it over 30 years and it, it finally died on me. So I need something else just to have in case I need it. And I figured why not show you guys the Fluke 101 multimeter, understanding that it's just for home use. You know, not it's not for an electrician or some person that works on motherboards of computers or engines of cars. It's just for standard everyday home use. All right, let's get to opening this box. All right, folks, this is it. This is the Fluke 101. Category three, it can take up to 600 volts, digital multimeter. Let's get to open this box. These are the test leads. This is the unit itself. Plastic on here. I'll take that off. She's a beaut. I like how small it is. It's like, you know, half the size of the Craftsman I had for all those years. User's manual. That's it. She's empty. Um, you have a red and black test lead. Electricians tell me that red is for the hot wire, black is for ground or neutral. Got to remember that. Here's an ombology. Looks like the batteries are already installed and working. Still going to check the battery compartment though. see you can twist this looks like with your just with your thumbnail and here are the batteries in the back looks like they provide triple a energizer batteries already installed and ready to go i've never seen that before Again, just use your thumb and you can lock it. I like that. You don't need a screwdriver, although you can use a screwdriver if you want. Okay, I wanted to get the camera a little closer. So here you have this beautiful little Fluke 101 multimeter. Um, Nobology, first turn from off is your AC voltage. That also gives auto ranging use this for household power, you know, to check for 120 or 220 volt. Um, next is DC. And that's direct current. You check batteries at like your AAA, AA batteries or your car battery or your lawnmower battery. Next is AC millivolts and the millivolts are one thousandths of a volt. So very low voltage readings. If you, if you can tell me what I can check in the home for millivolts, that'd be great if you can put that down in the comments because I'm not really sure. I know that um, down at the component level of computers, they, they would need this type of uh, voltage reading. Next, you have ohm readings or resistance. And if you go here, click that yellow button, you can actually check for what they call continuity. It has to have that, I don't know what, like a, it's almost like um, cell phone bars going from low to high. But that means continuity and the ohms resistance 
setting and you select again, yep, and that means perform a diode check. It has like an arrow, it has like an arrow going to a slash or, or a, a point. Okay, next is capacitance. This is for computer electronics or television electronics. Um, I believe there's also capacitors on air, air conditioning units and other items like appliances like that. So if you could tell me around the house how I could check capacitance, because I'm not really sure, that'd be awesome. The next is frequency. But if you click here, this is duty cycle. So go back here and you get frequency. You click again for duty cycle. So if you check like your, your, house, your home outlet, you should have 120 volts. But then when you check frequency, it should be hopefully at 60 hertz. And then the DC should be at 50% duty cycle. Next is a hold button. So if you have a measurement, say, say down here, you just press hold and it'll stay right there. So you can take that measurement and it won't continue. Next thing we'll do is go around and test things inside the home because that's what I'm going to use this unit for. Like I said before, I'm not uh, any type of mechanic or, or computer technician. I don't work on motherboards. So I will only be using this as needed around the house. All right. First thing we'll do here to test this outlet and what I had to do, I found out real quickly that these new fangled outlets, it's hard to get these test leads in there and have it provide you anything worth a crap on this multimeter. So what I did is plugged in an extension cord and I'm going to test, test it right here on this bad boy. All right. So first thing I'll do is plug in the red test lead in the red slot and then plug in the black test lead in the black slot. Black being neutral, red being hot. And turn it to AC. It's the first nod, nodge there. First nodule there. And I've been told to plug in neutral first. So let's see if you can see that. So I'll go in with neutral here. And then go in with hot on the left, on the right hand side. What's the reading there? 121.1, 121. Give me a little extra voltage there. Nice. Now what I'll do is I'll move the black test lead down to ground from neutral, which is this left side. Move it from neutral down here to the ground. And it should read 120. If it reads 120, if it reads 120, that means that the ground is good all the way to the breaker panel. Okay, next I'll move from ground with the black test lead back to neutral. And I'll put the red lead into ground and there should be no reading or very little reading. What is it? Some strange reading. If there's a 120 volt here, then there's a problem with the wiring or there's an issue. It seems to be jumping all over the place. So I'm going to assume I'm good. Let me know in the comments if, if I'm wrong, because honestly, I'm not really sure what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just, uh, okay. So there you go. Very little marking there. So my ground looks like it's good.
Okay, so I have a sump pump that has a battery backup. And it's a 12 volt battery just like you put in your car. So I'm gonna use my voltmeter to go over there and check because I haven't checked it. It's been here for two and a half years. And supposedly when the power goes out in the house, that power backup keeps the sump pump going. So I'm gonna go test it and it'll be the first time any one of us here on this channel know whether it's working or not. Okay, we're right next to my sump pump here. This is a Blue Angel pump and it came with this 12 volt battery backup, just like a car. There's even a little uh, assemblage over here that tells me whether the this supposedly this 12 volt battery is is full, partial, or low. And right now it's is green, it says it's full. Okay, so all I do is lift this back. Uh, now, since I'm doing a battery here, I'm gonna put this on DC. That's two clicks. And just like in the car, I'm gonna put positive over here and negative over here, but I'm gonna start with negative first This is going to be tough. And then go over here to positive. Well, it says uh, 14. That's nice. 14 volts, actually. So that looks pretty good to me. Looks like it's still working after two and a half years. Not bad, Blue Angel pumps. That's nice. Okay, another thing I talked about was um, continuity. And it, this basically, you can tell whether um, there's a connection through a wire or for like a fuse, you can tell, this is a car fuse, you'll be able to tell whether this fuse is blown or not. So on your fluke, you just turn until you get to the ohms part, press the yellow button, and now you're in the continuity mode. Again, that's that little, looks like a, looks like a 5G, you know, it's going up in, in amplitude. It's pretty, hopefully you can see that. Okay, that's continuity mode. Hopefully you can see that. All right, and if you put the test leads together, you'll hear a noise. Okay, that means there's continuity. That means that the connection between these two actually is good. Same here. If I go and put one on either side of this, let me move this over closer to you. On either side of this fuse, it's good, right? There's a connection. If there was no connection, you'd hear no, no beep. So that's how you test. You, you can plug one on one end of your extension cable outside, one on the other to make sure there's connectivity all the way through it. Um, things like that at the house. Next, I have these batteries here. I have a nine volt battery from Duracell and a 1.5 volt AA. So let's see if this works on DC. Let's see here. This circular side over here is positive. Let me go negative first. I think I was supposed to put negative in first and then positive. And it's at 9.6 volts. Not bad, it's a little above. All right, let's try this guy. Positive is on this side. So this should be one and a half volts. Let's see if I can get the perfect little, let's go negative first and then positive. 
Yep. 1.6. I keep moving around, so. Yep, there you go. Hopefully you saw that. So you can test batteries. You can test continuity. You can test your sump pump battery, your car battery, your lawnmower battery. Um, you can make sure you have voltage coming to your house. All those things needed for the home. All right, so there you go. You went on a little journey with me with my brand new Fluke 101 multimeter. If you have any comments, please comment and let me know what else I could use this thing for around the house to help me out. Honestly, I, I don't use them very often, but if I could learn, I'd love to learn. Also, if you liked the video, please click like and please subscribe. Thanks very much. Bye. Test, 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 test. Test.